The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant plans to release decontaminated groundwater into the sea from next week. TEPCO wants to prevent the buildup of radiation-tainted water. The utility will first release about 4,000 tons of water pumped up from wells dug around the reactor buildings. Radioactive substances have been removed. Contaminated water is increasing at a volume of 300 tons a day as groundwater flows into the compound. Later this week, the utility also plans to resume construction of steel walls along the coast to stop groundwater seeping directly into the sea. The work was suspended until the groundwater release became possible. Officials at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say they've made a troubling discovery. Workers have detected a surge in the amount of radioactive cesium in a well at the facility in recent days. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials regularly monitor groundwater around the reactor buildings. They check for radioactive substances and analyze their effect on the environment. On Monday, workers found 9,000 becquerels of cesium-134 per liter of water in an observation well and 18,000 becquerels of cesium-137. The well is located between the number two reactor and the ocean. The amounts were about 90 times higher than on Friday. TEPCO officials say they can't explain the sudden jump. They're also unsure how the cesium is affecting the ocean. Workers have detected increasing amounts of radioactive substances in seawater near the plant since May. A sample taken last week contained the highest concentration of radioactive tritium recorded in more than two years. Workers at Japan's damaged nuclear plant have detected a spike in levels of a radioactive substance in nearby seawater. The plant's operator says it's the highest reading for tritium offshore in two years. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers collected water from a port near the Fukushima Daiichi plant on Wednesday. They found it contained 2,300 becquerels of tritium per liter. That's twice the amount detected about two weeks ago, at the highest since monitoring began in June 2011. But they say the figure is still well below the government set safety limit. TEPCO workers also tested water collected from a well near the port. They found it contained a record level of radioactive substances, 900,000 becquerels per liter. TEPCO officials say they can't rule out the possibility that contaminated groundwater seeped into the sea. They say they plan to build more observation wells and they'll solidify the ground to prevent the water reaching the ocean. Officials at Fukushima Daiichi have given more details about last week's leak of highly radioactive water. They say they had concerns about the hose that caused the leak, well, but workers didn't replace it because they were busy with other projects. 
Uh, authorities at Tokyo Electric Power Company found out about the problem. On Friday, they say a cracked hose caused as much as 15 tons of water to seep into a drainage channel. The water then leaked into the port that's managed by the plant. Workers tested the water and found the highest levels of radioactive substances since they began checking the port two years ago. Officials say the crack in the hose was caused by excessive bending. Those concerns had led them to replace similar equipment. TEPCO officials say they'll speed up the work. They're also putting together a manual to make sure the hoses receive proper checks. watching an island in southern Japan for signs of another volcanic eruption. They allowed some residents to make a quick trip to check up on their homes. Mount Shindake erupted on Friday. Nearly 140 people on Kuchino Erabu Island took refuge on the neighboring island of Yakushima. Most of them got out with just bare necessities. Authorities on Monday allowed residents to make two-hour visits. Nearly 30 people, including firefighters and power company workers, traveled to the island. They made sure power and gas supplies were shut off and they tended to livestock. Self-Defense Force helicopters and Coast Guard vessels were deployed to the area as a precaution. Officials with the Japan Meteorological Agency say the volcano is still highly active. Officials are keeping the alert level at 5, the highest on the scale. More than 8 million abandoned homes across Japan as the country's population continues to shrink. The government is taking action to deal more effectively with such empty houses through a law that took effect on Tuesday. Officials say there were about 8.2 million deserted homes in the country as of October 2013. That's one in seven houses. These empty structures are becoming a big problem. They hinder efforts to prevent crime and disasters, and they also spoil the look of neighborhoods. The legislation allows local governments to use property tax information to quickly determine who owns such abandoned homes. If the owners can't be identified in this way, municipal officials can enter empty houses to check their safety. If they detect any likelihood of collapse, they can order the owners either to repair or demolish the buildings. And if local officials can't confirm ownership, the law gives them the power to forcibly remove the structure. Japanese government officials are planning additional imports of butter as they're expecting another shortage this year. A plunge in milk production and a decreasing number of dairy farmers are behind the shortage. An organization of dairy product makers expects domestic butter production for the current fiscal year to be about 65,000 tons. Japan imports butter every year, too. Still, officials are expecting a shortage of about 7,000 tons. The Japanese government imported emergency butter shipments twice last year. Tokyo and Seoul are getting ready to discuss South Korean import restrictions on Japanese seafood. The talks in Geneva are governed by agreement under the World Trade Organization. Japan wants the restrictions lifted. South Korea imposed them after the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accident. South Korea has banned imports of fishery products from eight Japanese prefectures since September 2013. Fisheries Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi said the South Korean government has agreed to the meeting. Japan requested the talks last month. The Japanese government will step up efforts to get South Korea to lift the restrictions as soon as possible. Hayashi said WTO rules require negotiations to start within 30 days of a request. It's time now for the latest in business news. Japanese government officials plan to boost the use of generic drugs. They're just as effective as previously patented medicines, but cheaper. Ai Uchida joins us now from the business. So what does the government have in mind, Ai? Well, here's the thing, Catherine. Government officials, they want to um, they want a better budget. They want to cut costs in health care, for example, by doing that. And that is to help the government meet its goal of achieving a primary balance of a surplus by fiscal 2020. Now, health ministry officials have compiled a proposal to curb growing spending on medical care. By 2020, they aim to increase the use of generic drugs to 80% of the total, 
Officials predict savings will top $8 billion. Ministry officials say they will also step up efforts to prevent people with diabetes from developing severe symptoms. They'll also use new drugs to fight hepatitis C. The officials expect these two measures to reduce health care costs by about $2.5 billion. Of Japan's lower house has died. Nobutaka Machimura was 70 years old. Machimura was a senior member of the main ruling Liberal Democratic Party. He became lower house speaker in December last year, but he suffered a stroke and resigned in April. The lawmaker was first elected to the lower house in 1983 and went on to serve 12 terms in the diet. He once led the LDP's largest group, which included current Prime Minister Abe. He taught me many things when I was a young lawmaker. This is sudden news, and I'm very sorry to hear it. Machimura also served as Chief Cabinet Secretary, Foreign Minister, Education Minister, and other key posts. As Foreign Minister in Junichiro Koizumi's cabinet, he addressed issues such as U.S. military realignment in Japan. Officials in Nagasaki are conducting their annual task of adding new names to a list of victims of the 1945 atomic bombing. The list will be placed in a cenotaph during the city's annual memorial ceremony on August 9th. Two women whose parents were exposed to radiation began the work on Tuesday at Nagasaki City Hall. The city is marking the 70th anniversary of the bombing. Officials started the list nearly half a century ago to mourn the A-bomb victims and to ensure future generations remember those lost. Takako Morita carefully wrote down the names of survivors who died since last August and those of newly identified victims. She's been doing this for 14 years now. My mother passed away at the age of 88 this February. It means a lot to me to be adding the name of my own mother with my handwriting. I am fortunate. The register listed over 165,000 victims as of last July. Over 3,000 new names have been added annually over the last few years. An upcoming years. art exhibition in the United States will take a fresh look at the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki 70 years ago. The show will feature the work of two Japanese artists who spent more than 30 years depicting the horror of the attacks. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata reports. People wandering the streets with their clothes burned off their backs. This is what Iri Maruki and his wife Toshi saw in Hiroshima soon after the bombing in August 1945. The couple titled their painting, Ghosts. Another work depicts victims engulfed in flames. The Hiroshima panels have a permanent home in a gallery near Tokyo. They will go on display in a museum in Washington this month. They're part of an exhibition organized by U.S. scholars. People can see real-life messages in these paintings. The exhibition will give Americans an opportunity to reflect on the issue of atomic warfare. The Marukis made their paintings between 1950 and 1983. They say the reactions of viewers encouraged them to keep up through the decades. Children who see the paintings say they're scared, but they keep looking while clinging to their mother's legs. The couple has shown their work around the world. They met people from all over and listened to their own war stories. They were shocked by some of what they heard. This work is called Death of American Prisoners of War. It shows dozens of U.S. soldiers killed by angry citizens after the bombing of Hiroshima. The couple also depicted Korean victims in Nagasaki. They had heard about crows feasting on the bodies because people left Koreans unburied out of discrimination. Debates on nuclear weapons tend to be related to issues of the balance of political power, but putting politics aside, the panels convey a strong message to the hearts of people who see them. 
Okamura and the exhibit organizers say they want to use the show as an opportunity to begin fresh discussions on peace. Tomoko Kamata, NHK World, 